So do you want to learn how to make a trailer like this? Deep diving into these cases is like dancing with the devil. But when you dance with the devil, the devil doesn't change. He changes you. What's going on, everybody? It's me, Prairie Boy 77 aka Mr. Share, aka the Beard of Reason, aka the Voice of Reason, aka Mark. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I'm going to be walking you guys through the documentary trailer and showing you exactly how I made it. Um, if you want any of the you know special effects like the fire, the song, stuff like that, let me know, and yeah, I can definitely email that to you. The song is not uh, copyright free. Tech, well, kind of it is, but he, the guy wants you to join his Patreon to be able to use it technically, but people have been playing it and no one's been getting hit. So he doesn't really care. But anyways, I did join his Patreon and used it uh, legally. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys want any of that stuff, by all means, and also, if you like what I do, and if you want me to do something for you, for your channel, hit me up in my email. It will be in the description below and in the pinned comment. And also, again, I'm still looking for people who uh, contribute to the documentary. So if you're interested in that, hit me up in the email and let me know. But okay, I've wasted enough time because this is going to be kind of a long video. Let's get right on into it. So this first bit here is where I'm just saying deep diving into these cases, blah, deep blah, blah. Into these cases. And then while I'm talking, you see a video of me putting the mic on and getting ready for the documentary. So this is pretty simple. All I did was I removed the audio from this video clip and then replaced it with the audio that I recorded. So there's nothing really fancy with that. But now we'll get into the rest of it. Okay, so right when that text comes on, I've got two audio tracks here. One is basically just like that inception horn thing that I found. And then the other is the actual song. So I found it was better with to add that just to give it a little bit more punch right when the text comes on. So now the text thing. Now you you should be able to do this in your video editor. It'll just might be in a different location or a different way to do it, but this this is how to do it. So this is basically just white text with a black background. That's how it would look normally. But then I go to my composite area and I click multiply and it says mask and brackets. So what that tells the software is to mask out whatever the text is so it keeps the black background but just wherever there's text it deletes it so it's basically makes it see-through or clear or invisible however you want to say it and then underneath I have this little fire sequence I can't remember where I found this but if you guys want it I can definitely send it to you the, uh, the other thing I did, and I do this all throughout the trailer, and this is a really good tip for everybody, is um, you don't want anything that you put on a video, like a picture or text or anything, to appear and just sit there. You, you want it to move. 
So you notice the size of it at the start of this clip. And then by the time we get to the end, it's like it hasn't moved a lot, but it's moved a little. That really, really helps a lot when you make videos. You always want things moving. You never want something to sit still. Like if you put up a picture, you want to pan or zoom or something. Because if it just sits there, it, it just takes away from it. So, okay, so after the text, we go into, this was just a B-roll shot of somebody typing. I got that off of YouTube, I believe. And then I added this here where I actually was screen recording myself typing in Chris, Chris Watts in a YouTube search. And then what I did was, see, that's how it was looking. And then I masked it. So you just go to your mask tool and I was a, a box. I drew a box around this and then that was pretty much it. And this, the same thing as it goes forward, it's zooming in, but then right near the end, it's zooming in, but right near the end, it zooms in really fast. Like the last, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four, last five frames. And I'm going 24 frames per second, just so you guys know, because that's kind of the standard, but the last five frames is when it really picks up and zooms way in. And then we have the text again. Uh, the text, it's the same as the text was over here. There's nothing different, same thing. Just masked it out and zoomed it in a little bit so it looked like it was swelling. And then we go to the next one. This was just a shot I took. This was actually an afterthought because uh, I realized I needed to put something in there. But all I did was set up my camera, hit record, and uh, it was the same thing. I was panning over and zooming in towards the computer screen, which I had scrolling over my videos. And it would be the same thing. All of a sudden, last couple of frames, I started zooming in really quick. And then we have an actual screenshot of my screen playing one of my YouTube videos that I made. That's where we see Shanann coming home. So then after that, it goes to text again. And after the text, it goes to a shot of those girls. God, they are so cute. Oh my God. And the picture I have panning just, just slightly, just a little bit of movement. And then it cuts to another picture same thing just panning slightly and then we cut to another picture and this is of frank and frank jr and it's kind of focusing down on him and then right before like five frames before it zooms kind of past him and then we're back into more text now about the text i had it set up so you would see the word and then see what I'm talking about with the word. So here you have deception, then you see NK. Here you have murder, you see who is murdered. Here you have evil, now you see who is evil. This is Chris. Okay, then you have addiction, and that's us. And then we'll get into the really fancy part that I know everyone's looking forward to. But I also wanted to say that all of these, these cuts when I'm going from text to the picture and then back to text, it's all lining up with the music. You see, I have all these markers set up. And that's when I also put those, uh, well, we'll call them inception hits. But that's all lining up. You've got to have, whenever you make a transition or something, it has to be in time with the music. Otherwise, it just comes across really clunky and amateur and it doesn't flow. So now this part that everybody loves. It starts off just a, a picture of the Watts house. And I put it in black and white just for more effect. But notice as I click through, it's zooming in. 
like I, I've been saying, pictures have to be moving. You can't just have something sitting still. Not, not in a, in a video like this anyway. So, uh, let's talk about the audio first. Okay. First thing you'll see, you see this blue line here, you see how it's angling up. That's the volume. Okay. So this audio clip here is actually what's called a riser. I'll play it for you. So you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's just something that kind of builds intensity and then has a hard break. So rising as in it's like rising in intensity. So what I actually did was I used uh, my audio editing program to, uh, to do this. And I'm assuming you guys don't have an audio editing program. So I'm not going to bother showing you how I did it. If you're interested in that, I can, I can definitely put it up in another video, but, um, uh, what I did was I just basically set up an oscillator to uh, basically cut out the sound and bring it back, cut it out, bring it back. And I sped up the audio as it was going. So we had that, the stutter effect, which I'll play for you. So it made that, but you can make that just in your, in your video editing program. It just takes a bit longer. So what you would basically do is you would just take, okay, where do you want the stuttering to start? And obviously you end it at the, the finale of the riser. And then you would just kind of mark out even like four even measures. And then you would go four more, but, but shorter. So let's say, well, this is what one, two, three, four. That's about five, five frames. But then when you go up here, it'll be less one, two, three, four. And then when you get to the end, it's less and less. So that will give the illusion that it's speeding up. And what you do is let's say we're going to start it right here. So you would go, you put your marker here, you go a few frames and you would cut the audio. So I'll do it on the song here just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you cut that audio and then you would pull it back. So then there's that gap and that's, what's going to cause the stutter. And then whatever number of frames you did here, one, two, three, you'd go three again, one, two, three split. And then whatever this gap is, you do the same gap. That's two. So you go over here, one, two, oops. And then you pull that, pull it like that. So you do that three times maybe, and then you'll go a bit shorter. So then you'll go one, two and split. And then one, two, bring it back. So that, that, that'll give the illusion that things are speeding up. So yeah, that's all you would have to do for that. I'll undo all this. Now the hardest part was doing, uh, this picture part with, uh, Chris and myself. Now you'll notice that this isn't, uh, the image from the trailer. I don't know. Somehow I deleted that one one video so it's not in my editor anymore so I had to re-record this but it gives me a chance to talk about uh, slow motion because this clip was uh, recorded for slow motion I recorded it at 60 frames per second and my timeline my video is playing at 24 so that means that there are extra frames that aren't going to be shown because there's 60 but the the editor is only going to pick up 24 of them for every second. So you can conform your project to your frame rate, which would give this 0.4, which means be playing 40% of normal speed. So it's playing in slow motion. 
Now, again, your, uh, your editor will be different than what mine is. Uh, you may just stretch the clip out a little bit or whatever, but that's basically how, how that's done. Now, the reason I did that is because I was moving. I was lifting my, my finger up for the shush and I wanted it to look smooth and I didn't want it to be shaky. And the other reason is I had to mask myself out. So like you could see me, but you don't see my background where I was actually recording. So if I took the mask off, you see, I'm actually sitting in my room. You see R2D2 and Yoda. Now I did this quick. Like you see, I don't know. I got maybe 30, 30 points that I did that. If you were going to mask this out to make it look really good, you would want to do a lot more. You'd be like zooming way in and putting points like all over the place. You see that gap by my ear, like you'd want to get it a lot better, but this was just for a demonstration. And if you are going to mask yourself out in a video, you want to stay as completely still as you can, because that mask doesn't follow you. You have to, you'd have to move it. If you're moving around it, yeah, it makes it very, very difficult. So I had to mask myself and then I had to mask out the image of Chris, which wasn't that difficult because it's, that was just a picture. But you see there, you can see I did a lot more points to mask it out and get it to look good. So going back to the audio for a second, every time there was that whoop, 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 that's those whoops. That's when Chris's picture would appear over my face. So that's the start of the whoop. And there comes Chris. Now at the start, I have the opacity turned down. So it's kind of a blur between his face and mine. Uh, but then it, the opacity is going up. You see this little blue line here. And by the time we get to the end, the opacity is all the way at the max. And then the very last bit, it's Chris's face and it's there for a little bit longer. Like this isn't very long. This is one, two, three, four, about five frames. So that about a fifth of a second, just long enough. So when you're watching it, the last image you see before you see consumed is his face. So it's basically like the concept of this whole thing is we see evil, we see addiction, we're addicted. And then it's me shushing while basically I sort of evolve into Chris, like Chris becomes a part of me and then we are consumed. So that was pretty much the whole concept behind that. So then, yeah, we have consumed. And right then I cut the music and I let that, that riser trail off to nothing. And I wait a little bit, just, just when you're, you start to get that thing in your head, like, is it over? Then you get this, the movie poster. Now there was nothing really fancy about this. Uh, the only thing was the text I had to search for it because you know, when you see uh, movie posters, they always have that like really tall, skinny text. seems like they almost all have them. So I wanted to find something that was close to that. And this one is called tall, dark and handsome. It's a free font. I'm, there are probably better ones, but uh, again, this was uh, another afterthought that I was just thought, oh, it'd be cool to kind of make it look like a movie poster. So yeah, that was the, the whole concept with that. Oh, there's one thing I almost forgot to mention. Uh, you'll see this a lot of times in movies and stuff. You see these black bars on the top and bottom. That's a really common thing to do. I really don't understand why, but it does, I don't know. It makes things more cinematic somehow. But yeah, all I did for this is uh, I inserted a solid color, just a black 
black solid color. And then I went into my editing options and I just did another mask. So you can see if I were to actually remove the mask, just the black color. So then I masked, put a box in, and then change the mask from positive to negative so we wouldn't have it the wrong way. And that, that way you see the bars on the top and the bottom. So yeah, handy little trick to make things look more cinematic. And that's it. That is the whole thing. Now, I know a lot of this stuff probably went over your guy's head, but uh, the key things to take away is one, don't go crazy with your transitions. You'll see this, like some YouTube channels, they'll, it seems like it's constant, like glitch, glitchy things, stuttering, and it's like, it's just, it's just too much. And it really takes away from what you're trying to watch. If you're doing like a tech, tech review or something like that, then you would want more of that stuff. But, but it should be in keeping with the actual style of, you know, your video. That's why my, my transitions were pretty basic, pretty much just pans and zooms. And I think those are really the best, the best things you can do. Like some of the transitions, even on this, this program, they're pretty funky. I mean, they're cool looking, but I mean, do you see those in movies? Like what movie have you ever watched where you actually really notice the transition? They're supposed to be seamless. You're not supposed to think about them. They're not supposed to, you're not supposed to call attention to them, right? So, I mean, for certain videos and stuff, it works, but for stuff like this, I mean, you don't want to be calling attention to it. So the other thing, putting at the start, putting audio with no picture, it's very powerful. It really grabs people's attention. And then having my image of me doing something else, not talking, it really, it really built up some suspense. And then we had the hit of the music and everything. And then the fiery text. So you want to have all your stuff has to line up with the music. You don't make your video and then try and find music to match. You get the music, you get an image of your head of how you want things to go. You find the music that works and then you cut your video to match the song. So that was it. And then, yeah, just do a uh, panning and zooms so things don't sit still while the video plays because that's just a big no-no. You want, you always want movement. Always, always, always. The only time I didn't have any movement was at the end because that's a poster. But yeah, that's it. So if you guys have any questions or if you want me to get into anything a little bit deeper, like the audio thing, uh, I'd be happy to do that and I'll answer any questions you guys got. But uh, yeah, this video went on long enough. So let's, uh, let's wrap it up, shall we? <laughs> So there you have it guys. Um, it looks complicated, but when you break things down in little bits and pieces, it's really not. And yeah, I hope you guys uh, learn from this. Hope you try and do something like this for your channel. And again, if you uh, want my help, hit me up in the email. And if you want any of the bits and pieces that I use, like the song or sound effects or, or whatever from from that trailer let me know i'll email them to you that's about it so yeah any questions hit me up in the comments below hit the thumbs up share this out subscribe if you haven't join the team if you want buy some merch if you're really feeling frisky get this mug and a coffee mug oh yeah all right thanks for hanging guys uh next video is coming up we're gonna have uh talking about the explosion theory with the watts case uh, more about the documentary that's going to be kicking off really soon and uh, other true crime cases lots of fun stuff coming up so yeah we will catch you on the next one and until then this is prairie boy 77 saying good day good night and godspeed